This has had a chance to defrost again and I'm going to make sure that there's no water on top and there's not. If there is, you can just rotate the rack or we rotate the rack. So we rotate the rack like this to pour anything off so we can get down the drain. And then I can wipe out the rest of the machine using paper towel on the little grabber thing like we've done so many times. So here's the water from that last batch, which was uh, zucchini, one tray of zucchini and then three trays of roast pork with a gravy kind of sauce on it. So a, a full gallon on that one. Okay, now we'll get it set up for the next batch. Uh, the next batch, again, one of my sister's uh, batches of items. She has some canned crushed pineapple, a big number 10 can of crushed pineapple. And then I think it might have been a number 10 can, I don't even know, of I think lima beans. So we'll check the freezer, see what she left there for us to freeze dry and get those going just as quick as possible. So we're going to get this pre-cooling and give it um, enough time to cool down to the temperature that the freezer is, so about uh, zero degrees. And it can be a little higher because if this is 10 and still cooling and I take the food out, by the time I get it over here, it's usually up to about 10. So that's a pretty good number for it. So got that closed. We'll get this restarted using the customized cycle. And with this, you've got an opportunity to change the uh, shelf temperatures and adjust the cycle times. I've got that, the cycle times, I have it set to six hours pre-freeze and then 11 hour final freeze. And actually, well, I got close enough to it, it went to it. So, so you can adjust those. And because the, uh, I do almost everything pre-frozen, six hours is more than enough time. I could probably do it with three or four hours most of the time. But I see, I haven't seen any downside to doing this except for maybe slightly speed, but that's fine. So then close the drain valve and continue. And currently it's about 9.30 at night, so it's kind of late in the day. So, so this batch won't finish until two days from now because of that. It says it's 67 degrees in there right now and it'll be freezing for six hours. And sometime when this gets down to about 10 degrees or so, we'll get the food in there. The freeze dryer is pre-cooled now for an hour and a half, not just a half hour. So it's very cold already. Um, now we'll get another batch of my sister's stuff in there. So she has some uh, number 10 cans of crushed dull pineapple that she wants freeze dried. So we've got six full size of that. And then some lima beans and onions. Um, so I don't know what those are about. So we'll get those and we'll get the pans and get them in there. So we've got the, the pans were in here pre-freezing. and we'll get them moved over and get them loaded. Tray one. And these are the pineapple. So each one of these whole pans was two cups. Okay, so tray one. Oh, that's pretty heavy. 2008, 2008. And I'll get a thermometer, yeah, I'll get thermometers in that in just a minute. So tray two. And I'll put this other half one on here. So tray two, 1948. I'll get the thermometer in that in a minute. So these are lima beans, bacon, and onions. Oh, that actually sounds pretty good. It's not at all what I expected. I thought that these were just 
canned lima beans. So unless they come this way, I have no idea. 2006. Now I've got space for one more thing on there. Okay, so I had this one little guy left. I'm going to put that in here and they just won't have a completely full tray. Now we'll get thermometers in these. Let's see what we can do. Pineapple is very soft, much softer than most of the things that I've drilled. So that was very easy to drill into. Oh, that's frozen. So now I've got thermometers in all of those. And once again, thermometers aren't needed or required, but I like to have them because it's, I find it useful for a couple of times during the batch. Uh, it gives me a heads up that it's warming up nicely, so I know before it tells me when it's getting close to done. And when it's time to take them out, if I've let the machine stop, it tells me, is it warm enough so that I can take it out without any condensation on the trays or on the food? So now let's go get them in. Okay, so now they're ready to go in there. I've got the lima beans, bacon and whatever, the one other tray, and a bunch of crushed pineapple. The thermometer underneath that's touching the barrel shows just about 40 below now. The thermometer or the temperature probe that's built into the bottom of the second shelf uh, says that it's about negative 24 right now. So it's dropping nicely. It's very cold and we'll get them in. The thermometers in the trays are showing about 10 degrees right now. So it did not warm up much uh, during the process of getting them on the trays and getting a thermometer in. So that's great. Uh, it's got four more hours of freeze time, time but since this has pineapple in it uh, and I know that well, at least with fresh pineapple, that extra freeze time really helps with like pineapple, blueberries, uh, some of the sweet fruits and ice cream seem to need extra freeze time. I'm going to give it another three hours freeze time to make sure that the pineapple gets all the way cold. Other than that, I want to make sure that we've got a seal ring around there. So let's close the drain, make sure the drain valve's closed. Once again, I don't know that it's necessary for the pineapple when it's canned crushed pineapple to be any extra cold. And they were packed in pineapple juice, so it's not like it's a real sugary kind of syrupy or something. But I know that the fresh pineapple or the bigger uh, frozen pineapple that I've done, it, if you don't get it cold enough, it seems to collapse a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and give this extra freeze time. All right, so, oh, I guess it's six below. And of course that warmed up when I put the warm trays on there. So now it's only six below. And I'm gonna add extra time. So that gives it a total of eight hours freeze time. Those are all in there, uh, chilling nicely. They'll start the freeze dry, the main freeze dry cycle in seven hours. Don't go away, we'll be right back in two days. So the batch of pineapple, uh, my sister's pineapple, crushed pineapple, and lima bean stuff, whatever that thing is, has been in there for about 44 and a quarter hours. It has about a quarter hour until it's going to stop automatically, which means the heaters are gonna turn off in just a few minutes. The lowest temperature on a tray says 110 degrees, and it's been at least 110 degrees for at least four to six hours. I should have taken about a couple hours ago to check for this dry check. 
but they also do look like they've shrunk a little bit more since then, which would mean they're still drying. So now we'll bypass the rest of the time on the machine, get them out, weigh them, and put them back in for the dry check. Right, so use the down arrow to bypass the rest of it. And open the drain valve. Set it back up here. And starting with tray one. Very light and fluffy, and it's 110 degrees on that tray. It feels hotter underneath. All right, 971. So this is our initial starting point for weighing to see if they are done losing weight. Tray two, 954. I'll put tray two up on top and put tray one down underneath. Okay, now tray three. And that's a toasty, toasty tray. It says about 125 degrees and it's toasty feeling. It's a 1049. I'm going to put a minus sign because it went down to 48 for a second. And I want to check this piece of the pineapple. Well, they feel they're pliable right now, but because of all the sugars in them, a lot of these tend to be pliable until they cool and then they get very, very crunchy. But there also still could be water in it. And that's why the dry check, of course. And this is God knows what, some kind of lima bean thing it said. Lima beans and bacon and onions. We'll trust that to be true. Okay, tray four, 1,018. Now, these can all go back up, and tray four will come up one spot, and tray three will go down a spot. With those back in there, we'll give it, uh, we'll restart the machine using the more dry time, and get them re-drying or continue drying for two more hours and then check it to make sure that it stopped losing weight. If it loses more weight, then we'll put them in for two more hours. And we'll keep doing that with at least two hours at a time until it stops losing weight. Pineapple usually, um, and I can't remember if I've done crushed pineapple like this, but pineapple in general usually takes a very long time. Pineapple, blueberries, uh, some of the other things seem to take a very long time. Mango, but who wants mango? They're yucky. And they're interesting because they collapse. But that's a separate thing for another video. So now, we'll get it restarted with more dry time. Okay, I'm going to hit more dry time. And I'll go close the drain valve. Okay, drain valve is closed. Continue. And it's plenty cool. Then I'll add another 15 minutes so we get the full two hours. We'll be back in two hours to check this, so don't go away. We'll be just a second. It's just short of two hours later now, and time to take them back out and check them. The total freeze-dry time so far is almost 46 and a half hours. Um, it could be done. But I also wouldn't be surprised at all if it's lost more weight because there's pineapple. And pineapple just seems to take a long time sometimes. But this is crushed pineapple and I can't remember if I've done crushed pineapple. It seems like I have. Anyway, we'll get it out and check it. I'm going to use the down arrow to bypass that last bit. And then open the drain valve. seal there. Interesting, something on the seal right there. Lucky it sealed. All right, now we'll get those out and check them. So tray one. So it's between 969 and 970. I'm going to count the 969, which means it's down two. So tray two, 
9.53 and bouncing back up to 9.54. Now it's steady at 9.53. No, now it's 9.54. So it's a fraction of a gram. Okay. Let's check tray three. It also had pineapple on it. It's 10.48 and before it's 10.49 but bouncing down to 10.48 so it's less than one gram. So far I think we're good. And 10.18 that one has no change. So here's what we got. Tray one might have up to two grams. Tray two has less than one. Tray three has less than one. Tray four has nothing. What do you want to do? The dramatic dun dun dun. What to do? Because one of them lost two grams. And it's pineapple. Uh, pineapple sometimes doesn't like to give up its moisture. So let's put this in here so it's cooling in there. If we take it out now, then they won't be in there and we'll have them taken care of. Um, things that make you go, hmm. Well, I could be inclined to go either way, but here's what you could do. You could take the stuff off of that tray and put it onto this tray and put all the pineapple back in and give it more time because uh, I'm not going to try to put another batch in tonight because it's late and got to defrost but we could give it another couple hours or we could just let it go till tomorrow morning and then I mean it would be ridiculous but it doesn't hurt anything except for then it would be later Frosting. right then we, otherwise it would defrost overnight Okay, so that's the decision. We're going to put the pineapple back in, take all the non-pineapple non out, even the tray three that has three blocks of non-pineapple, we're going to just kind of move those over. That'll be a little bit more difficult for weight, but we can figure it out because I can weigh that tray now. Hmm. The fact that we don't have those blocks exactly uh, let's see. Well, the pineapple's not going to lose much regardless. So I can take those and weigh that, use that weight that we have right now for those three blocks. We already know that the blocks are approximately one cup or a half pound each, depending if she measured it with one cup or pounds. Either way, we have some information on them, uh, enough that we can work out the water loss of the total batch and that's all I really need for my tracking because the individual blocks of food what do I care they're not mine uh, so I'll put the pineapple back in and take those three pieces off and then re-weigh tray three before I put it back in with just pineapple so going to transfer these three blocks um, number two Okay, so this is this. Oh, one of these should have a number under it. There it is, because this one was the other half of that pan. That went together as a pan. And these two went together as a pan, because that helps take care of the fact that that was a pound, but they weren't necessarily evenly divided. And when I say not necessarily, and when I say not necessarily even divided, I mean nowhere near evenly divided. But those get back to the pound by putting it that way. Okay, so that will get moved over to bag. These will get put back in the freeze dryer for additional time. And I, I'll reweigh that one with just those two blocks on before it goes back in. So you can have that one. Be gone with it. All right, so now this one can be reweighed with just this block. Now it's down, it's 830. 
somewhere between 8.30 and 8.31. It's bouncing up and down. So tray three is now, I'll just put a little note on here, 8.30 plus. It's bouncing up. All right, so that can go back in. I'm going to put tray three on the top. And tray two. And tray one down here. And we'll just leave the bottom one empty. When you're reeve drying something like this where it needs just a few hours, you could put candy on the bottom on an empty one because it would be done very quickly. Okay, I'll get the drain valve closed and we'll get this restarted with more dry time. Drain valve is closed, continue. And it's cool because the way I have the fan on it. Okay. So then we come back at about 10 o'clock or a little after and check it. With two more hours, that puts it a little after 10 o'clock at night. And so we can take them out and bag them then. Or if we don't feel like it, we can add even more time and just simply let it go till tomorrow morning. The only big advantage of taking them out tonight is really um, that we can get the machine defrosted for relatively early in the morning. But frankly, I don't get up early in the morning anyway. But that means it would just be later in the day since I didn't up. Anyway, so either we'll see you in just a minute or we'll see you in just a minute, but it'll be tomorrow. Uh, so don't go away. So you need one of these for this one so that it doesn't have to be crushed. These, I think, are going to come apart so easily that you could you could do one of two... Well, you could do multiple you things. Thing just, you know, well, I was going to say half. you could crush it slightly and use a teeny bag yeah. and half. Or if you want to get uh, them more even, you could probably crush both pieces and then even them out into two. Because I, I, I could be wrong. Let's, let's try one. I don't think you do, are, do, I think. do you care if it gets crushed? No. How does it feel about it? Oh, it's crushed. <laughs> it's crushed. Oh, woe is me. Oh, I should probably not use this. I should probably use this. This. Yeah. Because then... Okay, so I'm going to try... Because they seem... They feel like they're pretty fragile. Yep. Okay, it takes almost nothing now let's make oh, sure yeah okay so it's not hurting the beans it's just breaking the saucy bits apart but that just and... doesn't take much okay for these going to split this into two bags so each one would have about a cup or about a half pound so we've got it labeled the batch number uh, written on the bag in felt pen that way if this fails miserably and we lose this label we still have this and we can go back and look at the notes and find out what's in here so we've got batch number what it is the date it went into the freeze dryer and then any amount she wants to write on there i have more information on mine so we just need to put 63 grams of this into each one of the two bags and we'll have a one cup in each just going to go ahead and get about 63 grams and then adjust it okay 62.8 that's about as close as i'm going to get to 63. ta-da so the other two are going to go two blocks in a um, bag so the weight doesn't really matter at all because they were pre-weighed before she put them on the pans when the sauce breaks apart easily like that, it works out pretty well. If it doesn't, or if it has big pieces of, like this has uh, pork roast in it, if we crush it like this, it's going to ruin the texture of that. So on this, we're trying to just gently break the sauce parts of it up and not damage the beans in it. And it seems to work pretty well when we do it that way. And of course, you can use a funnel, you can use the scoop, anything to get it into the bag. But a lot of times when we're crushing it, we like to use a zipper bag like this. So
so that uh, it keeps it away from the moisture that much better. And we'll just shake it down. And this could be rehydrated right in the bag if you wanted to, or pour it into something else. So we like to have the bags as ready as possible, get them bagged quickly and sealed. This kind of food doesn't seem to really draw in the moisture very much, like some fruits or like orange juice does. Orange juice, um, back to, I was going to do a lot of orange juice. I think I'd want a dehumidifier in the room because it starts to get sticky in seconds if you're not careful. We're using the longer, the real quart bag. When I say these are quart bags, they're not really a quart bag. They're three quarters of a quart bag. These are the actual quart bags and they're long enough for these blocks to go in there unscathed and have enough room to close it without crushing them at all. So if it's got nice big chunks in there, you can put them in this size and not damage them at all. Even though we still have the whole rest of the batch of freeze drying in there that has the pineapple, we're not waiting, of course, to seal these. We're gonna add 300 cc oxygen absorbers to each one of the quart and pint bags and get them heat sealed. Kind of tuck them down the side so they don't end up in the seal area or the zipper. Okay, now let's get these. I'm going to push out any extra air I can. Okay, now I'll get them heat sealed. So I'm sealing as high up on the bag as I can get. And I'm going to do this first one twice real quick. Make sure it's all toasty and up to temperature and melting that, sealing that completely. So we've got the seal up high. It's a good seal. There's still room for two or three more tries down below that before it gets to the zipper. And there's nothing magical about this. If you had to seal down here, you could. You just wouldn't be able to open it and use the zipper. everything except the pineapple. So now, one last thing on these, and we could wait until we have the pineapple ones too, but we're done with these, we might as well get all of it. So I'm going to add the gross weight of each bag on the bag. That way, if moisture starts getting through that bag, we'll know just by weighing it. And if it's bouncing between two numbers, we take the higher number, and you could use a more sensitive scale too. 171. Those are ready for storage or for sending back to their home. And then we'll get the pineapple as soon as it's ready. Just over two hours later, time to take them out and check them again. It only lost a very small amount last time, so the previous two hours. So hopefully, that was all it was going to lose and it's dry now and they can be bagged. If not, it'll stay in overnight. So let's get them out and check them. Okay, so bypass the last of that with the down arrow. Okay, open the drain valve. And we'll get them out and check them. Okay, starting at tray one, this is the one that had a weight loss previously. And what I said last time, 969, so no change. And tray two, same thing, no change. And tray three. Okay, same thing. Okay, with those no change, I will stop the machine with the no defrost button. So I'll get the thermometer out from underneath and I'll put a, my little uh, defrost deflector in there and the fan in place. I'll wait to turn this on until after we've moved the food over and taken care of bagging just to keep it quieter. So that puts it at 48 and three quarters hours. 
but they didn't drop any this time. So we know they were dry two hours ago or 46 and three quarters hours. So the power usage on the pineapple is 3149. It would have been less for the other trays that we already took out. They were probably dry many hours ago. So now with it reset, it's ready for the next batch. So now that we've got the weights for these, and they were essentially the same as we weighed them uh, for the testing, minus about eight grams for each thermometer. So now they're ready to bag. And they're approximately two cups for the full block and approximately one cup for each of the other blocks on the average. So we could mix and match and try to get similar weights for each one, but it's got just a wonderful texture. But sugary fruits like this will want to pull moisture from the air. So we try to, for one thing, not handle them a lot. And if we're going to crush them, we like to, if we're going to crush them a lot, like to do that in a plastic bag so that it's uh, protected from some of the moisture, even though it's still not as good as a Mylar bag. So it depends on how you're going to deal with it. Because for instance, it will crush up. You can also just break them in half and stuff them in a bag that way. So what's your plan? Okay, so which ones are you going with two cups? I think I'm gonna use, I'm gonna grab one of these because I think it's gonna need to be crushed some to put in it to get two cups in one. So, yeah, these will definitely pull moisture from the air and it won't take a huge long time before they start to get soft. So, oh, that's easily crushed. Okay, because it's very crunchy. And even though we've checked it and weighed it and double checked it, if we ever find a damp spot in one of these or a cold spot, it all gets dumped back on the tray and back in. But that's never happened since we started using weight to check with. Uh, when we've just looked for the fattest spot and checked it, occasionally when we go to crush it, we would find a wet spot. Never happened again since we started using weight and weighing the whole trays. Okay. I probably don't want to crush it more than that. You end up with powder. All right, there's two pounds of crushed pineapple and dry. So we'll get them done quickly. Yeehaw! So we have two quart bags and eight pint bags, and we're going to use 300 cc oxygen absorbers in each of them. We'll get these in there and get those zippered shut. Push out any extra air we can and zipper them shut. Okay, so that gets rid of as much extra air as you can. Da -da -da -da. We can finish sealing these to go with the lima beans that we did just a few minutes ago. Okay, it was two and a half hours ago, but on the video it should only be a few minutes ago. So we'll get these sealed and then labeled with the net weights or the gross weights just like the others and then those will be done to put in a bag and send them back home. Uh, defrost the freeze dryer overnight this time because it's late. So we'll get those gross weights on those and then those can go into the bag to be returned home and then we'll move on to the next batch. So see you on the next batch. Thanks for watching. What the heck is this stuff? Pineapple. <laughs> Pineapple and something else. Pineapple and some kind of lima bean thing.